Hello, my name is Blake within the Hyperloop. Let's get started with some news pods. It's been a while since we last did a news pod video and a lot has happened, so let's get started. First, Hyper Poland um, is going to demonstrate their magnetic rail. This vehicle um, will travel with magnetic linear bearings, it will levitate, and it's passive, and um, they're gonna be testing it out uh, next month in a live preview that's invite only but I would highly recommend you check out their website. Um, also, this really fascinating post, um, exactly how um, they've been working on the technology for years, um, and it's gonna be a three-stage solution to full Hyperloop eventually. But the first is the commercialization of a magnetic railway, which will be able to travel 300 kilometers an hour on already existing railway lines. They've had a lot of, um, uh, backing from the Polish National Railway and they've been working really hard and they're just about to release this. Um, I would highly recommend you check out this technical uh, blog post about it. Um, it's going to be really cool. We're really excited and congratulations Hyper Poland. Um, next, uh, there's a um, EIT European Award um, and uh, you can still vote for um, the awardees which are Tim Houtner of uh, Heart Hyperloop and David um, Perez of Zeleros. Um, two Hyperloop uh, people, so definitely make a vote and so Hyperloop can be uh, better known in Europe. Um, speaking of Zeleros, um, they will be participating in a sustainability investment forum in New York uh, September uh, 25th, or they already did, um, <laughs> it was a couple days ago. Um, so that's really good. We're looking forward to them um, being more active in the United States. Next, um, this is a really interesting article. Um, we didn't know about it, um, but it turns out there's a $2 million study across Pennsylvania to study Hyperloop. This is in conjunction with AECOM. Um, really connecting the east to the west of Pennsylvania from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia through Harrisburg, which is the capital. Um, it was an invite-only um, discussion about this, uh, but we're really glad to see that there's um, leadership within the state legislature to look at this transportation. Um, it would cut down the transportation um, of uh, cargo um, dramatically, um, I think they said about 12 minutes or so, and um, airplane it takes 80 minutes, cars take 4.5 hours, and um, you know, uh, trains would take seven hours. Um, so it's just really interesting that now there's a regional aspect of um, groups in the United States wanting to make sure that they're at the front lines to understand this te technology and connecting their major cities. Um, especially with this cargo um, as the first kind of mode. Um, speaking of uh, cargo, um, uh, Dahemradra, uh, Minister of Petroleum and Natural Gas um, in India, um, visited a uh, display of DP World, which is the cargo branded um, podding of Virgin Hyperloop One and really interesting, this was a massive, importantly a massive um, uh, uh, experience for Virgin Hyperloop One in the Middle East and in um, the uh, uh, other, <laughs> other region uh, around there. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but next to Transpod, um, we've seen the shift in branding from a lot of Hyperloop companies to reiterate sustainability um, and how even airlines, which Hyperloop is kind of being pitted against in regional airlines. Um, so we're glad to see Transpod is working hard on that. Um, also, Transpod uh, got a couple good mentions about Hyperloop in Canada, um, connecting Toronto and Montreal, um, which is really interesting. So I'd recommend you check out this um, article and share that. Um, Virgin Hyperloop One, of course, today and Friday, um, they're at the Rock Center in New York City with their test vehicle. They've added a couple more destinations. I'm glad we're, that they're doing um, outreach uh, to STEM. This is going back uh, to Virgin Hyperloop One in Saudi Arabia, uh, meeting various um, industry funds 
ambassadors, the United States, U.S. trade counselors, um, and the ministers of transportation. So big push um, in the Middle East by Virgin. Um, they are also on the road in the United States, New York, Columbia, St. Louis, Raleigh, and Washington, D.C., of course. Um, New York uh, is an interesting um, branding and marketing uh, part. Uh, Columbia, not exactly sure why they're in Columbia. St. Louis, there's you know a hotbed of innovation um, in wanting Hyperloop connecting St. Louis and Kansas City. Raleigh is looking to connect three different cities in the corridor. Um, and Washington, D.C. will, uh, for political reasons. So that's really interesting. They're slowly making their way across the United States in what appears to be gridlock traffic. Um, how unfortunate. <laughs> Um, this is a video that Virgin Hyperloop uh, released about their time at the World Energy Congress, which is in conjunction with uh, what they were, um, all their other meetings. It's really interesting in that they're letting people onto this um, passenger pod, what appears to be, um, you know, male and female uh, portions uh, for the local population. Um, What's also interesting is that they're not rolling out their DP World cargo pod uh, so people can kick uh, the tires on that um, and see just how small the packets or the cargo containers can be inside that um, Hyperloop pod. But it's really good to see that they're showing it off. And of course, there's the Minister of uh, Petroleum and Oil in India also attending and you can see uh, the CEO. Um, I believe this gentleman is in, uh, is in charge of uh, global business development, and I'm not exactly sure of the other Hyperloop One executives. So, uh, speaking of Hyperloop, um, Beep Bop uh, from HTT um, shared this video. Let's just give it a listen. They've been showing. Safety and certification guidelines are extremely important for the Hyperloop, just like they are for any mode of transportation because you're dealing with people and their lives and the lives of those around them. We want to ensure the public that it is something that is going to be very safe. It is something new that they haven't seen before. Some of these elements and technologies have already existed. I think for some people who are kind of worried about the safety, worried about whether it's going to work or not, I think yes, because it's it's already been there, elements around us, we're just now putting it all together in a collaborative environment, so. So it's really interesting. Um, Hyperloop TT is really pushing for the passenger experience, whereas um, Virgin Hyperloop One is now pushing for cargo first, um, but also passengers later on. Um, but yeah, it's really good. I wonder if we're going to see a pivot by Hyperloop TV, TT um, to show uh, cargo and how cargo will be fitting into their pod. Um, kind of an easy uh, play to do both at the same time, but Hyperloop TT is really pushing the human experience and safety. Um, finally, if you want to learn more about Hyperloop, please check out this um, online course on edX, a Hyperloop Changing the Future of Transportation. It's incredibly good, uh, put on by Delft Hyperloop. Um, they do a lot of good interviews with um, many different people and they've done a ton of research. Of course, they have a website, hyperloopconnected.com. Uh, Let's see, .org, sorry. And um, other really great pieces of information um, like crossing the ocean with Hyperloop, you know, just really mind-blowing. I'd highly recommend you check it out and you participate on the online course. So thanks for staying in the Hyperloop and uh, stay in the loop.